other people, most people I would say, have a little bit of a harder time figuring out what do I do with my life. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Nahama and I make videos on life coaching and lifestyle and today I am so excited because I am finally doing another life coaching video. It's been a while. I had a baby recently and so it's been a lot more challenging to do sit down videos like this but I'm excited to be doing one right now so let's jump right into it. Being that it's January, I figured this is a good topic for this time of year as people are trying to set goals and crack down a little bit more on on getting their life together and planning for the future. Some people get luckier and instinctively know what their strengths are, who they want to be, where they want to go, and they set their goals accordingly and then take the necessary steps to get there. Other people, most people I would say, have a little bit of a harder time figuring out what do I do with my life? And I'm speaking right now mainly about career, pretty much how to figure out what to do for a living. I don't know about you, but I'm not the kind of person that is able to sit at a desk and work a nine to five job. It's just, it's just not my personality. I'm gonna share with you six steps to figuring out what to do with your life. These are things that I personally have done to help myself find my path. I always wanted to do things that light me up, that are meaningful. As cliche as it sounds, I always wanted to love what I do. I feel really grateful that I am in a place where I'm doing so many things that I love that are making me a living. And so I wanna share those tips with you. The first thing is figuring out what you're passionate about. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't know. I'm not passionate about anything. There's nothing really that drives me. Maybe I'm just not a motivated person. I don't have any talents. If you know what your passion is, great. That's amazing, that's a great, great start. If not, if you resonate more with what I was just saying, think back on your life and ask yourself, when were the times in your life that you felt most happy, most motivated, like that I'm on the right track kind of feeling? And if you can pinpoint a few times like that, just ask yourself, what was I doing then? Who was I with? What was going on in that picture? Once you have a clear vision of what that was that felt right to you in your life, you can find a way to take those elements, even if it's not the exact same thing, and see how to make a career or business out of them. A quick example from personal experience is when I thought back on my life and I tried to think of different times that I just felt so purposeful and I felt really good about myself, I felt like, yeah, this is right, this is amazing, I felt energized. Many times it was when I was connecting with people, talking to people, giving advice to people, sharing my personal experiences. And when I thought about the core of what that meant, which is pretty much connecting to people, using life lessons that I learned and certain painful experiences that I've been through to guide and help other people through their life journey, I realized that life coaching could be the perfect fit for me. And honestly, once I had that epiphany, I Googled a life coaching course and I signed up and I jumped right in into it because it felt right because I felt like I knew that this is something that's gonna be meaningful for me for others it's gonna bring me joy it's gonna bring me income you want to try to tie together your passion and your calling in a way that can serve you and others in a way that you can give to the world contribute to the world do what you love and make money tip number two is know what your goals and your priorities are that is a big statement and let me know down below if you would like me to make a more in-depth video on setting goals, establishing values and priorities and things like that. But for now, my point is know what your goals and your priorities are because if you don't know, it'll be much harder to make decisions that will ultimately make you happy. For example, if you're the kind of person that prioritizes a certain financial goal, you may be okay taking a nine to five desk job even if it's not what you love because financially it makes sense for you. Like if you know yourself and you know you're the kind of person that you'll be fine hustling that nine to five job, working in a corporate environment, doing some kind of job that you may not love, but you'll be excited that you're building up your finances and working towards a goal that you have and you're totally okay Okay with that that's great that means you know what your goal is what your priorities are and you're okay to make certain sacrifices to get there if you're the kind of person that prioritizes enjoying your job over any monetary compensation then the career or business decisions that you make for yourself will be very very different than the person that I just described before this personally I fall into that second category there are many times that I've done 
jobs that I really, really enjoyed that did not give me a lot of money, but for me it was worth it. I'd rather enjoy my job and make little to no money, and I've done that many times in my life. There has been certain times where I've been very, very focused on making a certain amount of money and doing a job that would give me that. So of course we could be both people at different times in our lives, and sometimes we can't afford to be the second kind of person. So I just wanna acknowledge that. But either way, it's just good to know what your goals are, what your priorities are, so that you can make decisions accordingly. Tip number three, make a list of what you're good at and make a list of what you enjoy. Literally take out a piece of paper and a pen and just start writing down, what am I good at? What are my strengths? What are my talents? Are my strong suits? And don't tell me you don't have any because every single person has things that make them unique in the sense that they're strong and competent in certain areas that others might not be. You don't need to sing, act, or dance in order to have talent. That's sometimes a mistake that we make in thinking, oh, I don't have some dramatic talent, but that's okay. Every person has skills and talents and affinities for things that maybe are not glaringly obvious right away when you encounter them, but we all have our strengths. We all have the things that make us us that we're good at. And once you have that list, and then you start to make a list of the things that you enjoy, you can start to see where they overlap. You can bring them together and say, oh, hey, I'm really, really good at this, and I enjoy this, and they kind of have something in common. Maybe I can do a job or go for a career or get a degree that combines something that I love and something that I'm good at. Many times we love the things that we're good at. Think about a board game that you love to play. Probably it's because you're good at it. Most people don't love to play a board game that they're really terrible at. So off the bat, things that you enjoy will give you an indication of what you're good at, but they don't always overlap. And here again is that delicate balance between figuring out how to blend together the things that you are good at and the things that you enjoy so that you can figure out what to do with your life and feel good about it. Tip number four is a big one, maybe the most important one out of all these. And that is don't let the fear of maybe changing your mind stop you from deciding now what you want to do. I would say especially if you're young, but honestly at any age, you can always change what you do for a living. And a lot of times our interests and our hobbies change and develop. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. Sometimes we get stuck in the idea that we have to have this one thing that we're good at and we have to follow a certain career path from now until the rest of our lives. That we should know exactly what our path is in life, but that's a very restrictive way of thinking and way of living your life. People are free-flowing and fluid, and we change along with our life circumstances. Some passions only come out later in life. Our abilities develop over time. So let yourself be free to have the open mind to change in the future if necessary. It makes deciding now something that you want to do way less scary and it makes you more likely to actually get down to it and figure out what you want to do with your life because you're not afraid to lock yourself in. You know that it doesn't have to be forever. You can take who you are now, what you want to do now, make a plan, figure out your life and get to it and start enjoying it. And you can always follow that exact same process in a year, in six months, in five years, whenever it is that you want to reassess. You have the freedom to live the life that you want at any age, at any stage, over and over. You can always reevaluate. Tip number five is once you establish the goal that you want, once you establish what you want to do with your life, it's okay not to know the exact steps to get there. A lot of times people get stuck in that fear-based mindset where they don't want to make a decision about what they want to do because they don't know how to get there. It's okay to just start and to see where it leads. Of course, if you're planning to open a business or start heading down a certain career path, it's good to know what you want to achieve and have some kind of business plan or plan of action to take the necessary steps to get there. But many times the steps are not really clear until we jump into it. We have to actually take one step at a time. We have to get our hands dirty, get into it. And once we take those first few steps, the rest of the plan, the rest of the path develops along the way and it starts to lay itself out there. And the following steps just appear as you are traveling on that journey. We're not always at a place or able to create the exact plan that we need, but it's okay because we don't always need a strategy. Contrary to what the world, the business gurus try to tell us. I think it's a beautiful thing to go for it and to figure it out along the way. I feel like I've done that with so many important projects and things in my life that are so meaningful to me that are successful and certain things I didn't have a plan at all. 
I just knew what I wanted and I was willing to jump in and get started. Which brings me to my last point, tip number six, which is have the mindset of failure being part of the learning process. The first thing you do, the first business idea you come up with, the first brilliant plan that you have or job you take is not necessarily going to pan out well. Hopefully it does, but it's nothing to be afraid of and nothing to be ashamed of if it doesn't. Keep in mind that every single time that we put ourselves out there, that we jump into something, that we try something, and it doesn't go as planned or as we'd hoped, it's an opportunity for us to learn more about ourselves and be able to refine those ways to achieve what we want. Those lessons are invaluable, so don't dismiss those opportunities. Come in with the mindset that it's okay to fail, it's okay if something doesn't work out, it's okay to mess up, I'm only gonna learn, get better, and define more clearly what it is I want and have new understandings of the ways to get there. So those are the six tips I have for you today on how to figure out your life. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it, if it was valuable for you. Give this video a big thumbs up for me. Share this video with a friend who you think can benefit from it. And as always, I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.